Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Wallace Beery and Faye Bainter in Salute to the Marines. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. The personal philosophy of the average Marine is set down for posterity in the last verse of the Marine hymn, which says, If the Army and the Navy ever look on heaven's scenes, they'll find the streets are guarded by United States Marines. This week, the nation marks the 168th anniversary of the Marine Corps, and we add our part to the celebration by presenting Wallace Beery and Faye Bainter in their Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer hit, Salute to the Marines. At Midway, at Wake Island, at Guadalcanal, this service has written its record in fire and blood. But tonight's play is not that story. It's the personal drama of a sergeant major and his family, a veteran who retired to peace and quiet, and in typical Marine style, found he picked the hottest spot in the world. A fortunate break enabled us to reunite two of Hollywood's busiest stars. Faye Bainter has just returned to town from a camp tour after making Cry Havoc at metro goldwyn Mayer, and Wally Beery has just finished the picture rationing at the same studio. You know, in recent months, many of us have learned not to take even the simplest things of life for granted. We think twice before we throw things away. Housewives combine accounting with cookery. Old newspapers and waste fats suddenly turn out to be valuable raw materials. And a simple thing, like uh, a cake of soap, is something to be handled with care and respect especially if it's Lux toilet soap. Of course, the famous beauty of a few thousand years ago, like Cleopatra, would see nothing unusual in this at all. Beauty at that time was something to be preserved the hard way, and the possession of even one cake of Lux toilet soap would probably have called for building a pyramid to keep it safe. Now for a little history in the making, and the first act of Salute to the Marines, starring Wallace Beery as Bill Bailey and Faye Bainter as Jenny with Noah Berry as the colonel and Key Luke as Flashy. Tripoli. Hong Kong. New Orleans. Peking. Manila. Nella Wood. Chateau Thierry. These are but a few of their hallowed battlegrounds, for they've fought and died in every corner of the world. We are proud to salute the United States Marines. Long before Pearl Harbor... The United States Marines were on regular duty in the Philippine Islands. In 1940, three battalions were stationed on the outskirts of Cavite. There, these leathernecks were drilled and trained by the toughest and roughest leatherneck of them all, Sergeant Major William Bailey. His superior officers called him Old Bill. Some of the men called him that old uh, so-and-so. But on one thing, they were agreed. Bill Bailey was all Marine, every inch of him. Company, halt! Order, arms! At ease. Well, men, I want to congratulate you. We've been three days on maneuvers, and I want to say that you men are in a class by yourselves. Yes, sir, I've been in the Marine Corps 29 years. I've trained thousands of boots. But you're the dirtiest, mangiest, way back mob I ever saw. I'll give you just 30 minutes to police yourself into something that looks human and stand inspection. Attention! Dismissed. Hey, that's pretty tough going, Bill. Thirty minutes. Yeah. <laughs> they couldn't scrape that mud off of themselves in thirty years. They're rounding into good shape, ain't they, huh? Yeah, they're doing fine. Hey, where's that barracks boy of mine? I got to do a little mud scraping myself. Hey, Flashy! Hey! Sergeant! Hello, boss. Gee whiz. Hiya, champ. You miss me? Sure. Three days you've been gone. Yeah. Say, turn the hose on this helmet, will you? Sure, Sergeant. I fix it up all nice and clean. Atta boy. You been training like I said? Sure. I do road work every day. Then I punch the bag. Fifteen rounds. But I could go forty. Easy. That's easy, but you don't want to overdo it. You'll grow stale. It won't be long now, huh, Sergeant? I got to be in shape. Oh, sure. Top shape. Gee, I can hardly believe you being my manager. 
helping me win back my title? It's in the bag, kid. One fight in Frisco, just a warm-up. Then a couple of more bouts at Hollywood Legion. Then Madison Square Garden and the announcer hold up my hand. Winner and again world champion, Flashy Lucas. Sure, that's it. Sergeant, it ain't true that they don't come back, is it? I can do it, can't I? Sure, sure you can. Only take it easy, that's all. It won't come all at once, kid, you know. Oh, I know. Sergeant Bailey? Yeah, what do you want, orderly? The colonel wants to see you at headquarters. The colonel, huh? Well, have I got time to change my clothes? The colonel said right away. Oh, look, uh, the, the old, the, the old, uh, I mean the uh, colonel, uh, was he mad or anything, huh? What's the matter, Bailey? You got a guilty conscience? Now, why should I have a guilty conscience? Tell me that. Now, look, chum, all I know is three more times in that brig, and they're going to name it after you. Hardly you can go. <laughs> Major Bailey, sir. Come in, Sergeant. The colonel sent for me, sir? Yes, I did. I'm sorry I didn't have time to change, sir. I just brought the battalion in from the back country. Uh, looks like you brought most of the back country with you. Well, the orderly said for me to come as is. I suppose if the orderly had found you taking a bath, you'd have come that way, too. Yes, sir. If it was the colonel's order, sir. Well, never mind, sir. Sergeant, this gentleman is Mr. Agnew on the staff of the Secretary of War, the Philippine government. How do you do, Sergeant? Fine, thank you, sir. Mr. Agno's government is undertaking a pretty big job. Needs a lot of help. Thought of you at once, Bailey. That's kind of you, sir. Any little thing that I can do for you at any time, sir? It is quite a big thing, Sergeant. At the time is now. Yes, sir. Bailey, I suppose you know the Philippines will become completely independent in 1945. Yes, sir. I heard something about that, sir. Independence is something that must be preserved. After it is won, it must be defended. We are preparing for the day when we must defend ours, when there will be no more United States Marines in the Philippines. Oh, you mean the Japs, huh? Mr. Agnew is speaking theoretically, Sergeant. We're not at war with Japan. Oh, p- pardon me, sir. I-, I got you. I got you. No names, huh? Really? I have an order to detach a certain number of officers and men to this training duty. I am sending you up to Zubig province to take charge of civilian training in that area. What? Me train civilians? Why, I wouldn't... Just a moment, Sergeant. Mr. Agno, don't hesitate to call on me if I can be of further service to you. Thank you. Good day, Colonel. Good day, sir. Good day, Sergeant. I'm pleased to meet you, sir. Well, get it off your chest, Bailey. I didn't want you sounding off in front of an official of the Philippine government. Is that terraining civilian stuff on the level, sir? Yes, it's on the level. Yeah, but I've got a job. I'm just not getting that first battalion whipped into shape so it'll look like something. Sergeant McCarty will take over. McCarty? That there dog-trotting donkey, why, he's just a recruit. He's only been in the service ten years. <laughs> Besides, them Filipinos, they're too little to make good fighting men. When God made the Filipino, he gave him so much heart that he had to skimp a little on the size of his body. Be ready to shove off for Zubik province the first thing in the morning. Yes, sir. Oh, sir, I, I hear that the 1st Battalion is going to be ordered to China to relieve the legation guards? Possibly. Sir, I've never asked a favor of my commanding officer yet. But if that 1st Battalion goes into active service, I've got to go with them. For 30 years, I've stood on that dock watching somebody else take the men into action that I've trained. And what did I get out of it? Nothing but fallen arches and a fish peddler's voice. It's very humiliating, sir. 30 years in the service and not a single battle honor on my record to look at my old age. The colonel knows I come up for retirement in a couple of months, and I don't want to be stuck way up there in Zubig province with things cracking wide open over there in Asia. I give you my word. If I'm ordered to Asia, you go with me. Thank you, sir. That's good enough for me, sir. By the way, you'll probably be seeing your wife and daughter up at Zubig. Oh, yeah, yeah. (laughs) My wife. Uh, Give Mrs. Bailey my best regards, will you? Yeah, yes, I will, sir. She's living near there, isn't she? Yes, sir. She certainly is, sir. What's the matter, Bailey? Oh, nothing, sir. Oh, all right. That's all, Bailey. Send me a report from Zubik. Oh, let me know what men you want to take with you. Yes, sir, and you let me know, sir, about going with you on active service, huh? The day I get my orders. Thank you, sir. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold it, you guys. Hold it. You know, heaven might have made you Filipino boys small, but they certainly made you loud. (laughs) 
Now, oh, listen, listen. This here thing is a bayonet. Now, when I say fixed bayonets, you take it out and you... What's the matter? Hey, listen. Flashy, come here. Yeah, boss? What are those guys babbling about? They know like bayonets. They don't. Well, I don't blame them for that. Takes a lot of nerve to handle that steel. Oh, they think bayonets baby stuff. Baby stuff? Baby... Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, listen, you guys. Get this straight. This bayonet is the wickedest weapon that was ever invented. A bayonet charge pushed home at the right minute will win for you when nothing else will. Now, watch that dummy. Here's the parry and the long thrust. <clears throat> get it? Now, just when the other fellow thinks he's got you, why, you smack him with the butt of that piece. You see? <laughs> oh, what are they laughing at? They think you're very funny, boss. Well, you tell them I didn't get these stripes on my arms from being a comedian. Hey, quiet! Quiet, this is a very serious business. Now, like I was saying before, the bayonet is the wickedest weapon that Excuse was... Excuse me, sir. Much better our way. What? How much more good to use Bolo? Bolo? What? What's it? Now, look, son. We ain't got no time to play games. Oh, Bolo, not game. Bolo is knife, see? Oh, knife. Well, you put it away before you nick your finger, will you? Excuse me, sir. You stick uh, bayonet and dummy, leave just a little hole, yes? We make one swing, cut them up in half. Oh, go on. Oh, you watch. Well, doggone. See? No more dummy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, but wait, wait. Wait a minute. Uh, you can't do that. Why, sir? War is to kill enemy, no? Why, we can't do it. Well, because, well, it ain't regulations, that's why. <laughs> hey, let me look at that doggone thing. Set up another dummy, Flashy. I want to try this here bolo stuff. Sure, boss. Go uh, ahead. Now, let's see. <clears throat> oh, well, that's not half bad. Well, I'll tell you. Maybe we can stretch the regulations a little and use the bayonet and the bolo together. All right, now, quiet, please, quiet. <laughs> Gosh, I feel like I've been put through a washing machine. Mosley, you take over that second platoon tomorrow. I'll teach those guys close order drill or I'll spend the rest of my life in a padded cell. Yeah, we'll get one with twin beds. You're a cinch to have company. Come and get it, boys. What's going on out there? Hey, she just got back with the mail. Let me at him. Goldberg, Baker, Callahan, Bailey. Hey, hey, give me that. Give me that. Where you been? You've had enough time to go down to the United States and bring back that mail. What'd you do, stop on the road? Wouldn't you like to know? Hey, gang, the 1st Battalion's leaving for China. Hey, wait a minute. Hey, wait. Are you kidding, Hank? I saw him back in the sea bags. I even said goodbye to a bunch of guys I know. There's a transport standing by in Cavite with steam up. Is that kidding? It's a good thing you went after the mail. I might have missed the whole show. Anderson, here, you take charge. Ah, uh, what's the big idea? You don't think the colonel is going to take that 1st Battalion anywhere without me, do you? Something must have happened to my orders. Hey, Flashy. Here, boss. Come on, get a hold of a truck. You and me's heading for Manila. So long, boys. This is what I've been waiting for. I'll send you a postal card from Shanghai. Yes, sir. I left Anderson in charge down there. A very good man, Colonel. The minute I heard the news that we were shoving off, why, I hightailed it right back here because... I figured that something had happened to my orders, sir. Oh, yes, yes, sir. Well, I promised that if I went, you'd go with me. Yes, sir. Them's your very words, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Uh, sit down, Betty. S sit down. Is the colonel feeling well? Oh, I never felt better in my life. <laughs> I thought maybe it was the old fever coming back on you, sir. Oh, no, sit down, sit down. A man can relax a little, can't he? Oh, sure, sure. Have a smoke, Bailey? Smoke? Yeah, have, have a cigar. Well, yes, I guess I will. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Well, how's the training coming, Billy? Oh, fine as silk, sir. You were right. Them little Filipinas are making great fighters. Of course, they've got their own idea as to how things should be done. Hmm. Did you see Mrs. Bailey while you were up there? Oh, yeah, yeah, once or twice. Is that all? Well, I'll tell you, Colonel, it's like this. You know, Jenny never forgave me for signing up for that last hitch. When she moved up there to Balogun to billet with the rest of them pacifist screwballs, and, well, since then, we, we don't get along so good. Oh, I'm sorry. You see, Colonel, Jenny's all hepped up over this brotherly love stuff. She and her friends figure out that they can save the world by turning the other cheek. But Helen, 
Helen's different. Last time I saw Helen, she was quite a young lady. Yes, sir, she sure is. Why, uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, well, what's the matter? Well, here I am, just sitting here gassing and... Oh, that's all right. Yes, sir, but I, I expected to find the colonel right up to his neck and work and blowing off steam, getting ready to go aboard that transport, sir. Well, I'm not going aboard the transport, and neither are you. What? Oh, <laughs> Ah, uh, you kind of had me scared there until I realized that you was only joking, sir. It's no joke. Lieutenant Colonel Barnes is taking the battalion. Barnes? Why, he's only a kid. Well, I've been told that fighting is a kid's business this day and age. The next war, if there is one, will be for young men, Sergeant. But you can't let him do that to me. Not again, sir. Why, it's the last chance I'll ever have to get that third decoration, sir. Sergeant, anybody can lead trained men into battle. But training men to be led, well, that's something else again. That's your job, Billy. It's always been your job. Sir, I'm going with that first battalion if I have to go to the hill and stow aboard that transport. No, you're not. You're staying right here in the Philippines and carrying out your orders like a good Marine. Yeah. I knew there's something wrong the minute you gave me that stogie. <laughs> I've been had by a two-bit cheroot. <laughs> a young man's war. Why, I can whip any man that you've got in the regiment. I've forgotten more than any man on board that transport will ever know. Sergeant. Tomorrow, we begin training another battalion. Is that all, sir? That's all. All right. Oh, uh, Bill. Yes, sir. Will it make it any easier if you remember? I'm not going either. Yeah, but with you, it's different, sir. You, you've got your battle on this. And... Well, that's all, sir. I'm sorry, Bill. Yes, sir. So am I. Oh. Ah! Ah, did they? Oh, yes, sir. They'll be there. Yeah, they'll be leaving in the morning. Here I am just sitting and waiting. Sitting and waiting for what? Come on home, Bud. Come on back to the barracks. Oh, go on away. I don't care. My hitch is up tomorrow, too. Thirty years. <laughs> Let him go. go on. Let him go. Let him go without me. Relax. Relax, old timer. Huh? Ah, take it easy. Here, have a cigar. Cigar? Why, you low down... No trouble, please. No trouble, Fox. What's the matter, old timer? Shove that old timer stuff down the smokestack, will you, sailor? I'll bust you wide open. No, I won't either. No, I won't. Old timer, that's me. You got me, old timer. Why, there was Marines with John Paul Jones and... There was Marines in 1812 on the Constitution. I'm in the Merchant Marine myself. That's okay. Don't apologize. <laughs> I guess you're all right. Then there was the Marines with Decatur, Tripoli. It was Marines that broke the Kaiser's back. Every battlefield all over the world has been crawling with Marines. And me, Bill Bailey... I ain't never been nowhere. Bill Bailey, I'm the only non-combat Marine in the history of the Marine Corps. <laughs> ah, tough luck. I always said the Marines was a crummy outfit. Why, you... Please, no trouble, Sergeant. I ain't going to let any seagull civilian insult the U.S. Marines. Why, yes, sap. I only said what you were saying. Oh! You was listening in on my private conversation, huh? Listen, hotshot. Don't you say anything about the Merchant Marine either, see? Yeah? Yeah! Yeah, I got a sock him. Fuck, oh, why you... Sergeant, no trouble, no trouble. Oh, trouble? This is a pleasure. Come on, open that door. Open that door let me out of here. Sit down, boss. Sit down and rest. Yeah, they're going to let us rot in this place. It's not so bad. Pretty good jail. Oh, yeah. Fine, yeah. Too bad we got licked. What no. do you mean we got licked? We were surrounded. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Here comes somebody. We get out of here in no time. No, no, we won't. It's an MP. Pick up, oh, handsome. Don't try and be funny. 
What am I charged with? Oh, practically nothing. Destruction of civilian property, drunken disorderly, resisting a patrol, assault and battery upon members of Brother Services, who went 12 merchant sailors. It was 13 sailors. A nice little riot you started. At your age, too. Why, you web-footed gold brick one lamb out of here. Who sent for you, anyway? Well, you got a couple of visitors outside. Visitors? Who? Jenny and Helen. No, Your no, family, no. remember? Don't let them in here. Don't tell, 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 tell them I've been ordered to sign them, will you? I can't stop them. they got a pass. Where is it? Oh, uh, here you are, Mrs. Bailey. Make yourself right at home. Oh, William. William Bailey. Yes, ma'am. Father. Hello, Helen. Well... Here we are again. Huh? <laughs> William, to think I have to visit you in the brig like a criminal. Oh, it's only temporary, Mom. Mother, you, you talk as if Daddy had done something terrible. The whole thing's probably a misunderstanding. Sure, just a disagreement between gentlemen. I can prove self-defense. Well, I'd rather have you here than in China. Bill, you don't know how we prayed. Oh, no. You ain't been praying against me again, have you? <laughs> Every minute since we heard the first battalion had been ordered into active service. Oh, I didn't think that you'd do that to me. Pray me out of the last chance that I've got to get that decoration. I might have known it. You started praying the very first day that we were married, and you prayed me out of every chance that I've ever had for active <laughs> service. And it ain't fair either, seeing us... Pa, I ain't been praying back at you. <laughs> Say, how did you know the 1st Battalion was shoving off to China? Mr. Casper told me. He's our neighbor up in Dalagan. Well, how do you know it? It's a military secret? Well, that don't make any difference anyway. I'm getting out of the Marines. I'm taking my retirement pay. William, are you really? Well, I don't believe it. They couldn't pry you out of that uniform. Now, I don't suppose you'd believe it either, Mom, huh? I want to believe you. But you've lied to me. Fooled me so many times. Well, I do many this time, honey. I'm getting out. And when I do, you ain't going to be married to the Marine Corps anymore. You don't know what this means. It's like starting all over again. But are you sure? Will they let you retire? Oh, probably after last night. They'll kick me off, Mom. No, they won't. I saw Colonel Mason. He said he hadn't heard you were in here. He doesn't even want to hear it. Yeah, oh, well, what's the difference? I'm getting out anyway. Company! Halt! All present. From the Secretary of the Navy to Sergeant Major William Bailey, United States Marine Corps. The Secretary of the Navy extends to Sergeant Major William Bailey congratulations upon his retirement at the expiration of 30 years' continuous service in the Corps. Throughout his long service, Sergeant Major William Bailey has distinguished himself by his devotion to duty. His unblemished record is and should be an inspiration to all hands in the Naval Service of the United States. This letter of commendation is to be attached to and made part of the service record of Sergeant Major Bailey by order of the Secretary of the Navy. Pass and review. Pass and review. Right. Hey. Forward. Hush. Well, Bill, we're going to miss you. Thank you, sir. There goes the 2nd Battalion. I I guess they're on their way, too, huh? That's right, Bill. Well, take care of yourself. Yeah, sure. So long, Bill. <laughs> Proud of you? Oh, hello, Helen. Hello, Jenny. Well, at last it's over. Come on, Bill. We're what? going home. Wait, I I just want to see the, the fellas leave. Uh. Bill, you are happy, aren't you? You wouldn't want to be going with them, would you? Me? No. No, that stuff's not for me anymore. Didn't you know? This fighting business, that's for kids now. I'm just an old timer. In a few moments, Mr. DeMille presents Wallace Beery and Faye Bainter in Act Two of Salute to the Marines. Candid quizzes are the rage these days. You know, you ask yourself questions about your own personality or appearance and rate yourself on the answers. 
Here's what we mean. I'm looking in the mirror. Do I like what I see? First, my hair. Nice and smooth. Becoming hairdo, too. I'll give myself a full ten points on that. Now for my complexion. Mm, not bad. Not too good, either. Only five points on that, I guess. What's the score on the care you give it? Well, I've been thinking about that. I I was going to try some real beauty care every night. Those Lux Soap Facial Screen Stars use. Instead of that lick and promise stuff? Well, usually it's late and I'm tired. Oh, I'll be honest with myself. Guess I rate about three for effort there. Look, you could raise that to ten, easy as pie. Of course I could. I will, too. Me for an active lather facial with Lux Soap every single night. Beginning now. And here's what she does. Smooth lots of the Lux Soap lather well in. Oh, my, but it's creamy. Feels wonderful on my skin. Rinse with warm water, flash on cold, and now a soft towel to pat skin dry. And it's only a few weeks later that she finds... Why, my skin really looks a lot fresher. Feels smoother, too. I think I'll give myself ten points for complexion now, thanks to my Lux Soap Beauty Care. Yes, it's true. Regular facials with Hollywood Beauty Soap do make complexions lovelier. Lux Toilet Soap is gentle and mild, just right to give delicate skin protecting care it needs. Try these Lux Soap Beauty Facial screen stars to tend on. Let the rich, active lather of this fine white soap work for you. Day by day, it will help your skin to become softer, smoother, lovelier to look at. Ask for Lux Toilet Soap tomorrow. And if your dealer is out of stock due to wartime conditions, he's sure to have more soon. Remember, Lux Toilet Soap, the beauty soap of the stars, is worth waiting for. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Act Two of Salute to the Marine, starring Wallace Beery as Bill Bailey. Faye Bainter as Jenny, with Noah Beery as the Colonel, and Key Luke as Flashy. Bill Bailey, ex-Marine, has retired to the pacifist settlement of Balligan, and the neighbors have turned out in force to welcome him to their midst. On the porch of Jenny's bungalow, Mr. Caspar, pacifist number one of Balligan, is holding forth on his favorite subject. Here freely and to speak freely. Every time we listen to the radio from Europe, we can thank our lucky stars that such things could never happen here in Balligan. Yeah. Oh, but I'm afraid we've been neglecting our host. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. I've been listening. I suppose as an ex-soldier, Mr. Marine. Ex-Marine, Doc. Oh, yes. Yeah. As an ex-Marine, I suppose you don't share our views at all, do you? No. No, Doc, I don't guess I do. You see, Mr. Bailey, none of us in Balligan believe that soldiers are really necessary. Uh, nothing personal, of course. Well, that's all right. I'm used to that. You know, a Marine is like a fireman. Now, he never called for him until the house is on fire. Soldiers are the weapons of industrial overlords. Yeah, well, I wouldn't know nothing about that, Mr. Casper, but I... Mr. Casper, my husband is no longer in the service. He's worn his last uniform, thank goodness. Haven't you, William? Yeah, yeah, I'm retired. So there's really nothing to discuss about it, is there? Well, uh, good afternoon, Mrs. Bailey. I'll be running along. Oh, so soon, Doctor. It was nice of you to come so Bill could meet his new friend. I am sure you will like Balligan, Mr. Bailey. We are simple, home-loving, peaceful people. Yeah, I can see that. You haven't met all of us yet, but we're all the same. Mr. Caratou here runs our radio station. He's an electrical engineer, educated in the United States. Hmm, is that so? Oh, yes. I took my science degree at the Cornell. Oh, you went to America and got smartened up. Not bad for a foreigner. Oh, yes, sir. I learned a much. America's all very smart. Good afternoon, Mr. Bailey. Good afternoon. Thank you for coming. Goodbye. So long. Goodbye. Thank Pleasure's you so all much. Mine. Goodbye. 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 Well, that's over. 
Now, didn't I tell you, Bill? Aren't they lovely people? Yeah, well, maybe they're okay, but not a one of them could get by a good recruiting officer. What they need is uh, some setting up exercises, something to put a ramrod down their back. Bill, stop living in the past. You've got to learn to relax. Now that you're home, I'm going to show you how. You just leave everything to me. Sure. Here, do you want to finish the rest of these hors d'oeuvres? Yeah, I ain't had nothing to eat yet at all. <clears throat> hey, Jenny, what, what's this year salty stuff you got spread on the dinner? Oh, yes, sir. I learned a much. Americans are very smart. Good afternoon, Mr. Berry. Good afternoon. Thank you for coming. Goodbye. So long. Goodbye. Thank Pleasure's you so all mine. Much. Goodbye. 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 Well, that's over. Now, didn't I tell you, Bill, aren't they lovely people? Yeah, well, maybe they're okay, but not a one of them could get by a good recruiting officer. What they need is uh, some setting-up exercises, something to put a ramrod down their back. Bill, stop living in the past. You've got to learn to relax. Now that you're home, I'm going to show you how. You just leave everything to me. Sure. Here, do you want to finish the rest of these hors d'oeuvres? Yeah, I ain't had nothing to eat yet at all. <clears throat> hey, Jenny, what, what's this year salty stuff you got spread on the toast? Anchovy taste, dear. Oh, well, I thought it was some kind of fish. <laughs> Come on, dear, get to bed. You must be tired. Yeah, all well, that talking kind of got me down. Oh, Bill, it's so good to have you home. Yeah, 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 it's nice. A real home and real friends. I'm afraid I'll wake up and find out I've been dreaming. No, no, this is the real McCoy. Home is where a man belongs, ain't it, Helen? Well, some men. It is better than the barracks, isn't it? Oh, sure, sure. I, I feel like a country gentleman. Still miss your old companions? Oh, them lugs? Oh, if I never see any of them again, that'll be soon enough for me. You know, they was a kind of a bad influence on me. Oh, Bill, you make me so happy. <laughs> oh, Jenny. Oh, don't mind me. You doves go right on with your billing and cooing. I'll wash the dishes. Good night, Dad. Good night, Helen. Come on now. I'll turn down your bed and you can get a good night. William. Yes, ma'am. William, what are these things? Them? Oh, that, that, <laughs> well, that's, that's a uniform, Jenny, a set of dress blues. What do you know about that? I found it under your mattress. You did? Well, I was, I was kind of saving it for Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> William, you lied to me. Oh, Jenny, now, how can you say that? You told me you'd given away every last uniform, that you never wanted to see them again. You cheated. You hid this one. Yeah, I guess you're right. Oh, I ain't no good. I ain't got no willpower, especially when it comes to thinking about some other lug wearing my dress blues. Oh, I fought and wrestled with temptation, but I lost. Maybe it's because I always had a picture of myself being buried in my blues. Gee, I can see myself right now laid out with my blues and... All my medals on my chest. The idea, why, it's almost sacrilegious. I'll get rid of these right away. No, no, I'll wait, Jenny. When assembly blows up yonder and the angel Gabriel calls a roll, he ain't never going to recognize Bill Bailey in civilian clothes. Maybe we shouldn't take a chance like that, honey. I'll answer to the angel Gabriel. Good night. <laughs> Anybody home? Oh, come in, Mr. Casper. Sit down. I can only stay a moment, Mrs. Bailey. I'm, well, frankly, I'm a little embarrassed. What is it? Has Bill done something wrong again? Well, uh, according to the principles we live by, yes. Mrs. Bailey, he's down at the garage. He has all the children of the town there, and he and that Filipino boy he brought with him, they, well, they're teaching the children to fight. <laughs> Okay, okay, that, that's enough, enough kids. Now, everybody sit down and cool off. Gee, Flashy, I bet you were the greatest fighter in the world. Me? I was the world champion. But Sergeant Bailey, he could be two world champions if he was not so busy protecting the United States. Ah, oh, Flashy, I wouldn't talk like that. Could you have been Sergeant Bailey? Well, you see, every time I got in a new bunch of boots for training, 
The first thing I ever did was to offer to lick any man in the outfit. I didn't have no takers. Gee, Marines? Well, they was Marines by the time I got through with them, all right. Sergeant Bailey, tell us how you won that battle of Chateau Thierry single-handed. Oh, well, that... That was mostly luck. I don't like to talk about that. Oh, much. come on, tell us. Tell us. Want it. Well, come okay, on. all we right. I'll tell you a little bit about it. <clears throat> you know, the, the guns got so hot that we could light our cigarettes off of them. Then we ran out of ammunition, so I said, boys, follow me. We'll charge them with the bayonets. Gee, the whole German army? All that was left of them. Why... We charged so fast that we fought our way right straight through Berlin and had to retreat back five miles to capture. <laughs> Gee. Sure. Just before the battle started, the old general came up to me and he says, Bill Bailey? Oh, oh, yeah, yes, kids. Uh, there was David, way up on the mountainside, <laughs> tending his little flock of sheep. It's all in the Bible. William. Oh, oh, why, hello, Jenny. I was just telling them they, they were very good little sheep, too. Yes, I, I spent a lot of time with the good book when I was with the Marines. Jimmy Carson, where did you get that black eye? Frankie gave it to me. Yeah, I gave it to him, but I got one, too. See? Children, I, I, I think you better go home. Home? No. Oh, no, now, go along. Oh, Hurry up. Get now, go on. Look, Jenny, they, but they was just played. Well, Bill, I'm ashamed of you. What do you suppose their mothers are going to say about this? Well, I don't know. I Bill, just... this is the end of my patience. All you've ever done since you came here is just stir up trouble. Oh, Mom, you know I wasn't doing Sneaking nothing. Sneaking away with those boys, drilling them, trying to make Marines out of them. Well, I was just playing, that I was... told you time and again that people here don't like that kind of playing. They're bringing up their children to believe that war and fighting is wrong. You come along and undo all their good work. It's getting so hot the village doesn't speak to me. I've heard 50 people say that you were a bad influence. I'm almost sorry I brought you to Val again. Sometimes I think it might have been better if I'd left you in the Marine Corps. Yeah. Maybe you're right, Jenny. Hey, Frankie, the fishing fleet's in! The fishing fleet! The fishing fleet's in! Hiya, Mr. Casper. Oh, good morning, Mr. Bailey. Pretty busy here today, huh? Like Saturday night for small town. Yes, there's always a stir when the fishing boats come in. People look forward to it. The fishermen spend a couple of days amusing themselves like children. Then they go back to sea again for weeks at a time. Well, they don't look like children to me, Mr. Casper. All Japs, ain't they? Yes, I've known them for years. Peace-loving, peace-abiding men with hearts of gold. And they've been very good to me. Yeah, I can tell that. Uh, you do business with them, Mr. Casper? They bring me merchandise from Japan. They have a great sense of loyalty to their friends. Me, I don't like Japs, boss. That's all right, Flashy. I ain't too fond of them myself. Please. All my life I've tried to destroy such prejudices. We must extend the hand of peace and friendship to all men. Accept them as brothers. But don't expect me to have any brotherly love for one of them there Japs. Every time I see one, I get goose pimples between my shoulder blades. Hey, them ships look pretty rich for fishermen's blood that I've ever seen. Steel hulls, high-compression diesels. Looks like something built for the Navy, don't it? Oh, the, the boats belong to a syndicate which employs fishermen. They must be staunchly built and of great cruising range. Why, sometimes they're at sea for months at a time. Travel thousands of miles seeking the best fishing grounds. Fishing grounds, huh? Well, maybe you're right. Maybe. I just can't make myself realize it. Only 18 days until Christmas. Maybe I'd feel more Christmassy if I could see a field covered with snow. Why, Mother, this is going to be the best Christmas the Bailey family ever had. We'll be together. William, we'll be late for church. Now, put down that newspaper, dear. I wouldn't believe that there little bow-legged, four-eyed monkey if he was standing on a stack of Bibles as high as a Washington monument. Who? Or that there Japanese ambassador, Kurosu. Now, Bill, it says peace right there in the paper. It must hurt them to print the truth for a change. 
Mr. Casper says that most of the trouble in the world is stirred up by the newspapers. I don't care what Mr. Casper says. I don't believe Casper, and I don't believe this your Curacao guy. Hitler was fought in peace, too, when he went in there and blitzed Holland and Belgium, wasn't he? Oh, I think it's criminal to create bad feelings between the Japanese and ourselves when we've lived in friendship for years. Dad, the Japanese wouldn't fly an ambassador all the way to Washington to talk peace. If they didn't mean it, would they? Well, I don't know anything about that, but if I was still in the Marines, I'd have double watches set and all the men right on the battle stations. Well, you're not in the Marines, and you are on your way to church, you old calamity holler. Come on now. Okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, Jenny, uh, you, you got a dime for me to put in the box when I get there? <laughs> Here you are, dear. Thank you, Jenny. <laughs> of war should hearken unto the voice of Isaiah. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nations, neither shall they learn war any more. <coughs> Japanese bombers. Bombers? Come on. Don't worry about me. I can walk. Take care of the others. Helen! I'm all right. Oh, give him to me. Let me hold him. No, no. Please, Mrs. Carson, don't let Please don't. <laughs> what is it? It's little Jimmy Carson. He's dead. They killed him. They killed my baby. Give him here. I'll carry him home. <laughs> my baby. My baby. <laughs> Bill, the whole town is burning. Sergeant! Come here, Flashy. Get back in that church and get the injured out. Wait, listen, boss. That Mr. Casper. He's making a speech. Casper? Where? Over here. All the people listening. No more of you need today. It was necessary for the bombers to come to prepare for the moment of glory. We will place arms in your hands. Use them to drive the Americans who made you slaves into the sea. Hunt them down. Kill them. I tell you, the Japanese are your brothers. The Americans are your enemies. We cannot fail. Liberty is yours. I promise you freedom. Haven't they always been your friends? Yes, right. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You hear what he says? He's your friend? Well, he was this little boy's friend, too. This little kid I'm holding in my arms. He patted him on the head. Used to feed him candy. He sat at the same table with his mother and father and ate their bread and butter. This is what happens to his friends. The same thing will happen to you. He calls himself Henry Casper. Ask him what his real name is. Henry Casper, I'm proud of it. Major in the army of death, Pilla. Your name is Rat. You came here with a flag of the United States wrapped around you, protected by the laws and the rights of the Americans. But all the time you were just a dirty, crawling, filthy bilge rat wheeling about peace and the brotherhood of man. Listen, folks. He says you're not Americans. I say that you are. You might not have been born in Peoria, Illinois, but you're just as good Americans as anybody that was. You are fools. You'll die for it if you listen to him. 
The bombers will come again, and the Japanese troops, they're on the way. Sure, but this time we'll be ready for them. Flashy, here, take this boy home. I got to beat up on a Nazi. Why, you, let me go, let go. So you're a Nazi major, are you? Well, I'm a United States Sergeant Marine Major. Folks, you heard what he said. The Japs are on their way. Well, you know what that means. None of you people want a war, but you're getting it just the same. War's like a sickness. Nobody wants it, but millions of people get it. When you get sick, you send for a doctor. When you get a war, you send for a soldier. That's me. I'm giving orders from here on. Get all those women and children out of there. Get them across that there Balligan Bridge or the highway. We got to evacuate them before the Japs get here. All right, hurry up, get going. After a brief intermission, Mr. DeMille returns with Wallace Beery and Faye Bainter for Act Three of Salute to the Marines. Now, oh, here comes Libby Collins, our Hollywood reporter. Libby, you had me scared there for a minute. I was afraid you weren't going to get here. Sorry, Mr. Kennedy. I was almost late. But don't blame me. It's all because of Joan Fontaine. Explain, Libby. Well, I just saw a preview of her latest picture. And it was so fascinating, I sat through it twice. Oh, now I understand, Libby. I'd sit through any picture twice that had Joan in it. She's lovely in this one, Mr. Kennedy. In spite of the severe hairdo and the prim bonnet she wears in the role of the Victorian governess. Well, who minds a prim bonnet if Joan's charming features are under it? And her lovely complexion. A luxe complexion, you know. Truly, Mr. Kennedy, I've never seen a smoother, softer skin than Joan's. And especially in the close-ups, you notice what a luminous look it has. I know what you mean, Libby. Sort of delicate and flower-like. Yes, Mr. Kennedy. And for that delicate skin of hers, Joan Fontaine needs a real beauty soap. That's why she uses Lux toilet soap. She says she uses it every day, too. Never neglects her day active lather facials because they're a real beauty aid. Lovely women everywhere say that. They find Lux toilet soap a really gentle care. The lather is so rich and creamy. Yes, screen stars say it's just like smoothing beauty in to use Lux soap. And I think every woman who tries it will agree. Now, there's a tip right from Hollywood. Nine out of ten screen stars use this fine white soap, you know. So, why not discover what daily Lux toilet soap care can do for your complexion? See how smooth it makes your skin feel. What new freshness it brings. And remember, it's patriotic not to waste soap. Lux Toilet Soap is hard milled to last, but you'll find it lasts even longer if you always put it in a soap dish that's dry. Now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. One of our stars has just come back from an exciting journey. We'll find out about it after the play. Now the curtain rises on the third act of Salute to the Marines, starring Wallace Beery and Faye Bainter, with Noah Beery and Key Luke. <laughs> The village of Balagan is in flames. An ex-Marine, Bailey, has taken over command. Alone, he stands in the rubble-littered streets directing evacuation. But now, around the corner, appears a welcome sight. Three Leathernecks leading a platoon of Filipino soldiers. Mostly, Saunders. Hiya, Sarge. Where'd you guys come from? Well, we're up the coast a couple of miles on maneuver. We heard the bombs, we come down the run. Who's commanding? Lieutenant James. He'll be here in a little while. Flashy, you go meet him. Tell him to put machine guns up on the side of that hill. The same place that we worked out the last problem. Okay, Sarge. We'll stay here and defend this village from house to house. Tree to tree, rock to rock. Yeah, we fight a delaying action, huh? That's right. Okay. So the Japs get here, we'll keep on evacuating the natives. Wait, you got a radio man? Yeah, we got Joseph. He can send. Pick up four men and take them over to that station down the street. Tell headquarters what's happened here and tell them we need help. Right. The Japs get across that Balligan Bridge. They'll overrun the whole country in a couple of hours. Tell the colonel we'll hold it as best we can till he can send a demolition spot. We got most of them out, Sergeant. What about Mrs. Bailey, Doc? She's down at the bridge with Helen. They're helping take care of the injured. You better get along down there, too, Doc. No. I want a rifle, please. Sometimes it's more important to be a man than a doctor. Okay, we can use men here. Boss, the Japs are landing. See? Yeah. Fishermen in uniform, huh? Well, let them come. Take your positions. Get on those machine guns. 
We'll give them their monkeys a dose of their own surprise. There they are, Sarge. I make the range about 100 yards. No, 85. No elevation. Okay, here they come. I'll let them have it. That's it. Look at them monkeys go down. <laughs> hey, you were right, Sarge. 85 on the nose. Keep it going, you men. Hey, Sarge, on gas to land, and they got tanks with them. Tanks, huh? Well, let's see. Yeah. Okay, closely. Better tell your boys to fall back. We'll have to now. They got those guns right on us. Tell them to fall back and regroup at Lieutenant James' position on the hill. Fall back, guys. Follow me. Sergeant Bailey reporting, sir. Keep down, Sergeant. I'm Lieutenant James. Yes, sir. All the women and children got over the bridge, all right, thanks to you. Me, sir? They tell me you had this evacuation plan two months ago. Oh, I just figured we'd play it kind of safe, that's all. What are your orders, sir? I think you know this position better than I do. You run the show, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. The way I see it, those Japs are in a hurry to get across Balligan Bridge. They'll come right up through here and right up the hill. It's the shortest route. And we stay here? Yes, sir. I figure the Colonel will have that demolition squad here pretty soon. Then we can fall back across the bridge just before they blow it up. Good, we'll stay. Here they come again. Keep down. Short burst, you guys. Save that ammunition. They got those tanks moving now. Saunders, don't let those tanks get behind us. Take three men and fall back to protect the road. Come on, guys. You three. Take 20 grenades. You'll need them. Sergeant, can those Filipino boys handle a job like that? Yes, sir. I trained those boys. That's good enough for me. Hey, Sergeant. He's the mission. Huh? Who? Yeah. Oh, Bill. Jenny. Here, get on quick. What are you doing here? I figured you were across that bridge. I thought there might be some here who needed help. Where's Helen? She's safe with the others. Here, Bill, I brought this for you. What's that? I went back to the house and... Well, my here. uniform, huh? My dress blue. Put oh. the coat on. Yeah. Maybe I'll feel more comfortable again, hey, huh? you better watch it, sir. They can spot those blues a mile away. Well, you let them. I want them. How do I look, Tom? Oh, Bill, I think you look grand. Hold them for a while. They've fallen back. We ought to feel flattered, Sergeant. They tossed everything they had at us from all directions. Yes, sir. How you doing, Jenny? Fine. But I could use some more bandages. Look, Mom, you, you've done enough here. I'll send a couple of the boys back with you. Try and make the bridge, huh? They're still wounded here, Bill. Yes, but... Li- as long as they're wounded, they need someone to take care of them. Anyway, you can't spare any men. I'm staying, Bill. But look, Jenny... Hey, the title's taking out to the bridge. Yeah. They got the demolition target set. Any orders? Wait a second. Fall back across the bridge. That's a good trick if we can do it. Okay, Mom. Here we go. We're getting out. What about the wounded? We'll have to carry them. Up you go, boys. Watch it. Keep down. Keep down. Oh! Sergeant, they come back of us. They, they surround us. Yeah, well, I guess we're staying here then. Bill, isn't that disobedience of orders? Still got a sense of humor, huh? Hey... Mosley! Yeah? Send a message to the colonel. Tell him we can't accept his invitation due to a previous engagement. Those are jet planes, Sergeant. Yeah. They stopped firing down below. I I guess they're going to let the plane finish us off. Hey, goes the bridge. Well... Nobody's going to use that for a long time. That's right. Nobody's going to cross that. Well, it's been a pleasure serving under you, sir. Oh, stop. I don't break no salute. I think you do. Here he comes. Give it to him. Getting a little lower every time. Nice shooting there, Flashy. Some fight, huh? This better than Madison Square Garden. Yeah. I'm some manager, ain't I, champ? Sure. You got instructions for this round? Sure I have. You Filipino boys are going to pick up them guns and disappear over into the woods. That's the kind of fighting you know best. Come on. What are you waiting for? Get moving. No go. We stay here and fight with you. No. No, no, you... No, you ain't. You're going to fight all right, but you're going to fight the biggest battle of your life. You're all going to win new titles. You know, this ain't just a little skirmish that's going to be over in one afternoon. Them chaps are going to try and climb all over these islands. 
Killing them off is going to be a full-time job for all of you from now on. Now remember all the things I taught you and use them. So long, champ. Okay. Maybe they tried to climb over these islands, but there are going to be a lot of us can climb over them, too. Sure, well, you stay right in there and keep punching. Champ, you hear? Carry out your orders. Sure, boss. Sure. Watch it. Jenny, Jenny, you okay? I'm fine. I had a girl. Bill, it's hopeless, isn't it? No, oh, I don't know. Yes, I... you do. I know it, too. Bill, I didn't realize all those 30 years while we were living them that they were leading up to just this one moment. I'm proud of you, Bill. Oh, oh Mom, you... And I'm proud. So proud of that uniform. So oh, my mom. I only wish the Marines had a uniform for women, too. Well, maybe they will before the war's over. You know, it's too bad the colonel wasn't here, Mom. He, he'd have enjoyed this. I bet maybe I'd, I'd get that decoration, too. of Sergeant Major Bailey killed in action, it is my privilege to present this highest of all decorations for valor to his next of kin, Sergeant Ellen Bailey, United States Marine Corps, Women's Reserve. Sergeant Helen Bailey, receive this in honor of a truly great Marine, your father, with the gratitude and in the name of the Congress of the People of the United States. We won't worry about the future of radio drama as long as we can get troopers like Wallace Beery and Faye Bainter. Thank you, CB. Always glad to get back here. You know, Faye, Wally's career has changed rather drastically since the First World War, which was the last time I had him in the picture. He played heavy then, didn't he? Yeah, I'm pretty heavy now. <laughs> <laughs> but not villainous, Wally. In 1917, you played a German general for me. At one time or another in the last 30 years, I suppose you played just about every type of part pictures could invent. Every kind except leading lady. Faye, I hate to contradict a lady, but in my very first film in 1911, I played a Swedish maid. <laughs> That performance alone set pictures back 20 years. 1911 was a long time ago, Wally. Why, it's even before the women had Lux soap for a complexion care. That's something I wouldn't want to give up. I've used it for years. Well, many millions of others say the same thing about Lux soap, eh? I wonder if you'd tell us something about the trip you've just made to the camps. We played the soldiers, sailors, marines, Mr. the mill. But I discovered what entertainment really can mean when we hit one small camp in the mountains where they hadn't even seen a woman in weeks. I've been in the theater since I was four years old, and this is the greatest thrill that's ever been for me. We're leaving for another tour tomorrow. Well, the best of luck to you, Faye. What's on the fire next week, C.B.? A romantic and tuneful drama of old San Francisco, Wally. It's the 20th Century Fox musical hit, Hello, Frisco, Hello. And our star... It's Alice Faye. Alice Faye plays an entertainer of the Barbary Coast days. And you'll hear the big song hits that sent everybody out of the theater humming. I'll guarantee next Monday will not be a Blue Monday if you join us for Hello, Frisco, Hello. I wish I could sing like Alice Faye. <laughs> good night, CB. Good night. <laughs> good night, good night. It's a wish to the ghost, it's a wish to the marine. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Alice Fay in Hello, Frisco, Hello. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Heard in tonight's play were Louise Arthur, Alex Havier, Charlie Lung, Robert Harris, Paula Winslow, 
Tommy Cook, Dix Davis, Fred Mackay, Charles Seal, Stanley Farrar, Jack Mather, Ed Emerson, 